At approximately 9 a.m. on February 19th, the first American Marines began setting foot on the small island of Iwo Jima in the Pacific Ocean. Stepping into the volcanic sand off their amphibious transports, they had no idea what they were in store for. After days of shelling, they hoped the Japanese that defended the island would be easily defeated. They would be wrong, and they were about to begin one of the fiercest battles in the Pacific during World War II. The island of Iwo Jima is located in the Pacific Ocean around 760 miles to the southeast of Tokyo. It is a volcanic island, which is what gives it the famous black sand. It has an irregular shape that many liken to a pork chop and a land area of around 8 square miles. So why was this tiny island in the Pacific a target for the American forces during World War II? Well, the intent was to use the island as a launching point for Allied planes to bomb mainland Japan. Alongside that, there are around 20,000 Japanese troops stationed on the island, ready for a fight. Now, the 20,000 Japanese defenders had many months to prepare their defenses on Iwo Jima, and prepare they did. Many fortified bunkers, utilizing concrete, strengthened with a blend of black sand from the island itself, were constructed all over the island. Alongside this, miles of complex tunnels were constructed, with many containing enough space to fit hundreds of Japanese soldiers within. Without a doubt, it was one of the most heavily fortified territories during the entire war. General Kuribayashi, the Japanese officer in charge of the defense of the island, utilized many strategies to try and beat back the Americans. One of them was implemented on D-Day, or the day the Americans landed. The first American forces landed around 0900 that day, or 9 a.m., February 19th. Kurabayashi, however, in an odd move, decided not to unleash the full force of his defenses immediately on the landing Americans, instead allowing troop buildup on the beaches for over an hour. During this time, there was still some resistance, however, it wasn't until a little after 10 a.m. that Kurabayashi allowed all of his heavy artillery to rain down fire on the congested beaches, causing horrific casualties. Because of the fierce resistance, after the first day, the Marines had not nearly made as much progress as planned. A fragile beachhead was secured, however landing proved difficult and would continue to do so due to the thick embankments of volcanic ash that covered the beaches. Mount Suribachi had also been cut off from the rest of the island thanks to the efforts of the 28th Regiment. The Marines continued to press in the following days, and by February 23rd they secured Mount Suribachi. It was during this time that the legendary photo by Joe Rosenthal of the Associated Press was taken of Marines raising the American flag on Mount Suribachi. This image of victory was anything but, however, as the battle was not nearly over and there was still a month of vicious fighting waiting for the Marines on the island. The northern sections of the island past the airfields would be where the Marines would face the bitterest resistance. A few key hills were seized by March 3rd, which may not sound like much, but for a speck of an island defended by 20,000 Japanese soldiers, it was. By March 8th, there was only a small portion of the island in the north left to take, named Cushman's Pocket. On March 8th, the Japanese naval captain led a bonsai charge against General Kurabayashi's orders against the Americans pressuring the pocket. It was a futile attempt that failed and the loss of defenders would help weaken an already weary Japanese defense. Although there were still Cushman's Pocket and a few other scattered spots of resistance on the island, the U.S. actually declared Iwo Jima secured on March 16th. This declaration was not true, and the island wouldn't truly be secured until March 26th, with the final suicide charge of a few hundred remaining Japanese defenders in the middle of the night on sleeping Americans. This attack, like the rest, failed, and with it, the defense of Iwo Jima. Over 21,000 Imperial Japanese soldiers were called upon in the defense of the island of Iwo Jima. By the end of over a month of brutal fighting, there would be less than a thousand survivors. It is shocking that the rest of the thousands of Japanese soldiers would perish on an 8 square mile piece of land in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It truly shows the dedication the Japanese army had to the emperor and country. Also shockingly, many Japanese soldiers would not surrender at the end of the battle, or even the end of the war. 
There are stories that stretch decades after the war of Japanese soldiers isolated on islands, having either not received news of the war's end or refusing to believe it. On Iwo Jima, there was one such instance of two Japanese soldiers who did not surrender until January 6th of 1949, many years after the end of the battle. They had survived in the caves the Japanese had built, stealing supplies from the American troops stationed on the island. On the American side, the casualties, however, were just as horrendous. In just 36 days, the Battle of Iwo Jima resulted in 26,000 American casualties and the deaths of nearly 7,000 U.S. Marines. Now today, the island is officially uninhabited, besides a Japanese military base and airfield. The only civilian access to the island is usually only for special circumstances, so if you wanted to go someday, it would be exceptionally difficult. There is still so much buried history and the bodies of thousands on the island that it's essentially just a burial ground. Hey y'all, Cameron just wanted to pop in here at the end and just say thank you for watching the video. Um, if you enjoyed it, leave it a like, uh, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Should have a couple other cool videos coming out in the near future that I am working on. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Hope you have a good day. As always, I'll see you on the flip side.